And Joey, it was very clear why Colorado was the president's trophy winners in this one. Afterwards, Blues captain Ryan O'Reilly saying that Colorado was clearly the better team and they didn't really give themselves a chance to Cinco saying at one point that it was embarrassing. Do you think that this is just a group of guys who are just kind of a little down and out? I mean, we talked about the injuries and just the fact that they've been beaten up all season and then getting beaten up in this series. Do you think these guys were just kind of struggling for some energy at the end there? Yeah, I do. I, I think it was just a hard year. It's, listen, it's a hard year for a lot of people, and I think that it's no exception for these players. You know, I think an aspect that we weren't really sure of how this would affect the team earlier in the season, now we know. And to me, it was drawn into that West division. I think, you know, it was forced upon the Blues, really nothing they could do about it. Uh, you, were, you were excited about the matchups against those predictable Vegas and Colorado teams. The aspect of drawn into the West, I don't think a lot of people really anticipate being a problem was just the, the sheer travel. And the amount of games, getting home at three in the morning from these, you know, these western cities and western states, did that lead to a lot of injuries, Brooke? I, I, I do believe so. I, I understand the travel, playing back to back nights. You know, your day off is basically when you get in at six in the morning. That that's your day off before you come back to the rink the next day and have to play again. Uh, when you're tired, when you're not getting your rest, when you're not recovering, that's when injuries really start to creep into your team. And I certainly think that was part of the issue uh, this year for the Blues. And you already brought up David Perron. I mean, losing your leading score right before just a key series like this and then losing Justin Falk and Robert Bortuzzo to injury in game two. I know that it would be great if we had a time machine. We can go back and get those guys back. But do you think it would have been a completely different series if we had David Perron in there and even Falk and Bortuzzo? You know, did I do I think it'd be a completely different series, like as if we would have swept the Colorado Avalanche? No, I, I don't think anything that extreme would have been a much more competitive series. Absolutely. I mean, David Perron, you mentioned the points, but aside from that, he's such a vocal guy in the locker room. He's one of the most passionate, toughest guys to take a puck from on this team. Uh, a player that just drives, drives Craig Ruby style of hockey. That's what you miss when you lost David Perron. Justin Falk's been your most consistent defenseman all season long. You know, and that's just being, that's just telling the truth. He's been that good for you in a second year with the St. Louis Blues. Robert Bortuzzo, uh, numbers may not be there, minutes are not there, but this is a heart and soul guy. This is a guy that has been through the gauntlet in the league. He's a guy that you win the cup with, uh, always has the team's back, always goes after players that are going after your skill players. So Robert Bortuzzo, heart and soul guy as well. So three huge pieces that the Blues missed this, this uh, postseason, Brooke, that certainly had a major impact on the season that would have made a much more competitive series against this Colorado Avalanche team. And those are just the players that were not in the lineup here tonight. You know, Colton Pareko has been dealing with a low back injury all season long. Vladimir Tarasenko, back-to-back -back shoulder surgeries. He dealt with a lower body injury before playoffs started. He didn't quite look himself this entire postseason. So, you know, he's going through something. I mean, going on the list, Jaden Schwartz, he loses his father to start this season. I mean, it was an emotional year. It was a hard, it was a hard year physically. It was a hard year emotionally, uh, psychologically. These players have never gone through. And no player has ever gone through what these players have gone through this year. Um, the silver lining with all this, I think the St. Louis Blues team, that this group that won back in 2019, I think they can officially take a break. You know, and it sounds crazy. That was two years ago, but you win the Cup in 19, you have all summer of celebration. You go right into the 2020 season, right? Then it's the pause. Then it's the awkwardness. Are we going to play? What's this bubble talk? Where are we going to Edmonton? Are we going to go to Vegas? Just players are trying to work out, but they can't go around each other. So that's not a break as well. Bubble bursts. Then October, November comes around. Are we going to have a season? It just kind of kept going on and on and on where these players just mentally could not check out from this hockey thing, right? It's been two years. But now starting tonight, this team can finally get a reset from that 2019 season. I truly believe that, Brooke, and it's going to, it's going to come and pay in dividends come next season. The Avalanche outscored the Blues 20 to 7 and trailed for only 7 minutes and 12 seconds. Over the four games, Grubauer was just incredible between the pipes for the Avs, stopping 103 out of 114 shots over the four games. Why couldn't the Blues slow down this Avs team? I mean, we definitely knew who they were coming into this, but it seems like they definitely lived up to the hype. And also the Blues just seemed to struggle slowing them down. Outside the injuries, what do you think that it was? Well, when you're that good, and, they, and the biggest thing about Colorado is they can beat you in so many different ways. So you can't stop that machine. You know, you look at the Edmonton Oilers. They have a very good top line of McDavid and Dreisaitl. If you shut that, if you shut that line down, you're going to have success. I mean, look at Winnipeg right now. They're up 2-0 in the series because McDavid and Dreisaitl have been left without points. That's how they can shut them down. For this Colorado team, 
you try to shut down the special teams, then the top line is going to get after it. The Blues did a great job shutting down McKinnon there in the game three. What happens? Then the death comes alive, right? Then all the lower scoring guys come and they start to score. Um, you, you, you shut down the power play. They, they went four for four in the PK in game three, but then Grubauer stands on his head. So the problem with why you can't slow down Colorado is because there's about four or five ways that they can beat you that they're exceptional at. So as soon as you take away one or two things, they're going to beat you in other ways. And that just is credit to Jerry Bender. It's credit to Joe Sackick. A lot of credit goes to the management of Colorado, how they built this team. Their star players showed up. Boy, did they ever. Nathan McKinnon, Rantanen, Landeskog, their captain, their heart and soul guy. They got after it in this series. Their goaltender played it as good as he did in the regular season. He's going to be a Vesna candidate, of course, this year in Grubauer. Uh, Kale McCarr, a fan of the game. Uh, Brooke, I know you and me both, fan of the game. You can't help but love the way Kale McCarr is changing the way the defensive position is happening in the National Hockey League. He was a force to be dealt with. Uh, Colorado was just that good. They're going to be a team that's going to be just absolutely creeping in there and, and going after the, the Cup this year along with Tampa Bay, two of the best teams right now in the National Hockey League. And just unfortunately for the Blues, they had to run into them in the first round.